Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain Riders of Justice. This movie tells the story of a soldier who goes home to his teenage daughter when his wife dies in a tragic train accident. It seemed like an accident until a mathematics geek, a fellow passenger on the train, and his two colleagues showed up and revealed the truth. What is the mystery behind the tragedy that took his wife's life? Will revenge bring good in the end? Let's find out in Riders of Justice. Riders of Justice begins in Talon, when an old priest with a white beard and his niece is looking at a red bicycle he was about to buy as a Christmas present. But the girl said that she wanted a blue bike, not a red one. The bicycle salesman said that he only had a red bicycle and asked them to come back later because he would find a blue bicycle first. After that, the seller ordered his men to steal a blue bicycle. A white van stops in front of a Danish train station, where a blue bicycle is chained to a pole. The two men then got out of the van, stole the bike, and rushed off. The next day, the owner of the blue bicycle, a girl named Mathilda, is seen talking to her mother Emma. In the car, because her bicycle was stolen, Mathilda had a hard time finding transportation to go to school, especially after Emma's car suddenly broke down. Emma then called her husband, Marcus, and told them about their daughter's bike being stolen and her car breaking down. Marcus, who is a soldier on duty in Afghanistan, said that his return was delayed by three months because he had to undergo military training. Emma seemed disappointed to hear the news of her husband's return, which again had to be postponed. After that, she decided to take Mathilda to school by train. Elsewhere, two men, named Otto and Lennart, were making presentations to their superiors. Their presentation of a worthless algorithm, which they claim can be used to predict future events. The bespectacled man, Otto, said that all events are the product of a series of previous events. But their superiors seemed unimpressed and fired them both. As Otto was about to go home on the train, he saw a man with an eagle tattoo with a sinister look in the same carriage as him. As the train stopped at the station, Otto saw a man get up from his seat, throw a sandwich and drink in the trash, then get out of the train. The man caught Otto's attention because of his suspicious behavior. Mathilda and Emma get on the train. It is crowded, so Otto insists that Emma has his seat. All of a sudden, the train then slams into another train which rakes the right side of the train car and kills Emma. While at the hospital, Otto sees Mathilda, who is devastated by her mother's death, and he feels guilty that Emma died after he gave his chair to her. Elsewhere, Marcus is told that his wife died in a train accident. Marcus immediately returned home filled with guilt for not protecting his family and only concerned with his duties as a soldier. Marcus asked that he be allowed to see his wife's body one last time at the hospital. But the nurse told him that Emma's condition was very pathetic and might make him feel disturbed. But Marcus didn't care and insisted that he could see his wife. On the other hand, Otto watched a broadcast on television that reported that the accident on the train had killed an important witness, who was none other than the fierce man with the eagle tattoo. The man turned out to be an important witness who would uncover the crimes committed by the head of the Riders of Justice motorcycle gang. Otto immediately concluded that the incident that occurred on the train was not an accident, but a premeditated murder to get rid of the key witness so that the head of the motorcycle gang was released from prosecution. Without thinking, he went straight to the police station and made his assumptions. He told about a man who had been acting suspiciously before the incident, but the police even laughed at him and thought he was just making it up because there was no evidence linking the incident to the Riders of Justice gang. Not getting a response, Otto also intends to investigate it himself and ask Leonard for help hacking the server and taking CCTV footage on the train just before the accident occurred. Meanwhile, Mathilda and Marcus find it difficult to accept the tragedy of Emma's death, causing tension in their relationship. Since Marcus always hides his sadness, Mathilda thinks her father needs help and asks him for counseling, but Marcus refuses and says he is fine. Otto and Leonard track down Marcus and meet him at his home to tell Marcus that the train accident was not a coincidence, but a premeditated murder to eliminate a key witness, who will provide testimony and evidence to land the head of the Riders of Justice gang in prison. Hearing this, Marcus immediately invited the two of them to come in and talk more about the incident that had killed his wife. Otto tells Marcus everything he knew at the time of the incident, including the whereabouts of a suspicious man because he got off the train just before the accident. Knowing that Emma's death was not an accident, Marcus is determined to find the suspected killer and avenge his wife's death. He also asked Otto and Leonard to reveal the man's identity and find out his whereabouts. Otto then goes to his friend, Emmon Thaler, who is a skilled hacker. Using Emmon Thaler's advanced facial recognition software, Otto and Leonard try to identify the suspicious man who left the train seconds before the crash. Because they couldn't find the light when the accuracy rate was 99%, Otto and Leonard then asked Emmenthaler to lower the facial recognition threshold to 95% accuracy and look for matches with Danish addresses. 
Although it was quite risky because he was afraid of the wrong person, Emmenthaler complied with the requests of his two friends and finally found the person with the highest percentage of matches in Denmark, namely Pal Olsen, who was none other than the brother of the head of the Riders of Justice motorcycle gang. On the other hand, Marcus, who was at home, looked worried because Mathola had not yet come home, even though it was getting late at night. Not long after, Mathola finally came home accompanied by her boyfriend. Because her boyfriend made words that offended Marcus, he then punched him in the face. Mathilda was angry because her father hit her boyfriend. Marcus then apologized to his daughter and asked Mathilda to take her boyfriend home to apologize to him directly. After that, Otto, Lennart, and Emmon Thaler met Marcus at his house. They then tell Marcus about the identity of the man on the train who turns out to be Pal Olsen, who is none other than Kurt Olsen's brother, the head of the Riders of Justice motorcycle gang. They had intended to go to Pal's house, intending to interrogate him for information about the train accident, but he pointed a gun at them. Marcus suddenly lost control and killed Pal in anger when they were about to leave. Lennart then enters the house to dispose of the evidence and erase Marcus's fingerprints. But then, Lennart saw a young man held captive at Pal's house. But Lennart said nothing and left instead. Mathilda invites her lover, Sirius, to have dinner at home with Marcus in the evening. Mathilda and her boyfriend try to get Marcus to speak to a crisis psychologist about his grief and violent behavior, but he refuses. After dinner, Marcus watches the news that Kurt Olsen has not been punished, because the witness in his case has died in a train accident. Kurt says he is sorry that his brother Pal was murdered, but celebrates his acquittal anyway. The next day, Marcus calls Otto, Lennart, and Emmon Thaler to the barn at his house and tells them to get all the information they can dig up about Riders of Justice, as Marcus plans to avenge his wife. Otto and the others agree to get the information and help Marcus, but they insist that they won't kill anyone. Mathilda sees Marcus and the others leaving the barn together. She recognizes Otto as the man on the train and questions her father about who they are. Lennart lies and explains that they are actually a therapy group trying to help her father with his trauma, and Lennart offers to be Mathilda's therapist. Hearing this, Mathilda was very happy because finally her father wanted to follow her advice. On the other hand, Kurt and his men are torturing Badeshka, the young man held captive at Pal's house at the time of his murder. Kurt asked the young man to reveal the identity of the person who had killed Pal. Badeshka only said that one of them mentioned Emmon Thaler's name. Meanwhile, Marcus decides to kill Kurt and the rest of the Riders of Justice gangsters to avenge his wife's death. Marcus then asks Otto, Lennart, and Emmon Thaler to come to his house and use the new one behind his house as a base camp while investigating Kurt and his henchmen. However, Emmon Thaler seemed dissatisfied because Marcus's computer equipment was very outdated and asked him to take his computer equipment from his house. Finally Marcus, Otto, and Lennart then rush to Emmon Thaler's house to get computer equipment. However, unbeknownst to them, Kurt's henchmen apparently already know Emmon Thaler's identity and are stalking his house. Kurt's men then opened fire on Marcus and the others as they entered Emmon Thaler's house. Marcus immediately saved Otto and Lennart. After that, he immediately ambushed Kurt's men, killing them all and rescuing Badeshka who was held hostage in the car. Marcus then collects all the automatic weapons belonging to Kurt's henchmen and returns them to his house. Arriving at the house, Marcus asked Otto and the others to hide from Kurt and his men who were looking for them. Over time, Otto and the others became closer to Mathilda. Even Mathilda asked to take a picture with Otto and upload it on social media. Not only that, but Marcus also taught Otto and the others to shoot for self-defense. On the other hand, Kurt and his men find out that Emmon Thaler has friends, namely Otto and Lennart. Kurt then orders his men to find the whereabouts of Otto and Lennart. Meanwhile, Emmon Thaler manages to hack into the gangsters' cell phones and learns that they plan to have a meeting at a bar. Marcus, Otto, Lennart, and Emmon Thaler drive to a restaurant where they think Kurt and his associates are. Marcus manages to kill Kurt and all of his henchmen. At Marcus's house, Otto sees Mathilda's wall with all of the events. He sees that it all started when her bike was stolen. He explains to her that an infinite number of moments led to the crash and trying to find one reason to explain it is useless. On the other hand, Badeshka, who was chatting with Lennart, then said that Pal was not on the train that had an accident because Pal and Badeshka were together and in Germany. Hearing this, Lennart was very surprised and told Otto and the others. When they go back to the facial identification process on the computer, they finally find out that the man they thought was Pal is an ordinary Egyptian man who works for a railroad company. The incident that occurred on the train was an accident, not sabotage intentionally to kill someone. After knowing this fact, Marcus became angry and very frustrated because he had attacked the wrong person. He overcame guilt, which multiplied Deventa by destroying the things around him. Elsewhere, the Riders of Justice gangsters get information about Otto through a social media post, 
and they rush to find the man. Riders of Justice manage to find the whereabouts of Sirius. This person had uploaded a photo of Otto with Mathilda on his social media and forced the young man to reveal the location of Otto's whereabouts. The next day, the remaining gangster uses information from Mathilda's boyfriend's social media and attacks Marcus's house. Some of them are injured, Mathilda is taken hostage, and Marcus is disarmed by the Riders of Justice. Otto, Leonard, and Emin Thaler, using weapon training Marcus gave them earlier, ambush and eventually kill the gangster, saving Marcus and Mathilda. The scene then switches to showing the Christmas atmosphere, where Marcus and Mathilda celebrate Christmas with Otto and the others and exchange gifts. They look like a happy family. The film ends by showing the priest giving a blue bicycle, which belongs to none other than Mathilda, to his niece as a Christmas present. The moral of this film is, don't act rashly when you want to do something. Take your time to investigate and think about many things before deciding to act. If our decisions or actions are not in accordance with reality, the consequences can be very fatal.